Okay, law part eight or so, intellectual property, uh, part four probably, and eh, patents part two. So, um, to recap, a patent is uh, a device, an invention. Um, for a lot of jurisdictions, a patent uh, should only be issued on a, some kind of hardware, even if the uh, patent registration allows you just to turn in a uh, schematic and description. Um, and then we get into, do we allow patenting of ideas? Do we allow pro patenting of processes? Do we allow patenting of software? Uh, so, discussion to be continued by lots of lawyers. And the answer, of course, in the end, will be, it depends. The, um, so, uh, a patent, uh, what is patentable, uh, something that a patent can be granted on should be novel, useful, and non-obvious. So, novel, it's new. Uh, this is an invention. This is not something um, that has been done before and is just being done in a different way, although uh, lots of patents are granted on that basis that uh, we'll, we'll take uh, our device that we've got a patent on. Um, we... Uh, you know, some, somebody will then come along and modify our device just enough that the patent office will grant them a patent. So, um, we, to prevent that, will uh, patent a bunch of devices, one of which is the one that we're actually producing, and a number of which are... Uh, devices that we think other people might get the idea of uh, trying to produce or patent or, you know, something like that. So, um, and as, as I say, prior art. Um, if somebody can prove that um, the... Uh, that something else was done uh, that is basically what you described in your patent before you applied for a patent, uh, then your patent can be invalidated. Um, it's not an easy process because once the government issues a patent, uh, the uh, essentially, you know, it's it's the government making a decision and the government is never wrong, is never willing to admit that they've made a mistake. So, um, basically, you've got to prove something cold uh, in order to win a case and have a patent overturned. And this is where I usually come in with the, the patent trolls. Patent trolls are people who don't intend to uh, create an invention. They just, they register patents on, based on an idea, and they'll describe it uh, sufficiently to um, get the patent issued, but they have no intention of actually making it, going to the work of, of actually making it. They'll wait for somebody else to go to the work of making it, and then they come along, wave their patent, and say, ah, oh, you are in violation of our patent, you owe us a hundred million dollars. And, uh, when it comes to antiviral software, this is where I come in, that very large corporation will uh, go to the trouble of uh, producing security software, which uh, in some way is, is based on the basic principles uh, that we have already talked about in terms of malware detection and prevention. And so the... Uh, you know, along comes the patent troll, say, okay, we've got a patent on this, um, you owe us $100 million, uh, very large corporation goes to 
their lawyers, their lawyers go to patent lawyers. The patent lawyers uh, do a prior art search, and they come out with this short, fat Canadian um, who has uh, reviewed tons and tons and tons of antiviral software. Basically all that there was back in the day. And so the, uh, uh, you know, they'll say, here's the patent that somebody has issued. Um, is there prior art before um, they applied for their patent? And generally speaking, the answer is yes. Because it's, you know, there's very little of this new under the sun. So um, here are... Uh, you know, soft pieces of software, which I still have. And um, I can say, yes, um, you know, this, this does what they say their patent is for, and it did it before they even applied for the patent. So um, then the, uh, the patent lawyers go back to the corporate lawyers. Corporate lawyers go back to a uh, very large corporation. Very large corporation says to the patent troll, okay, um, we have found prior art. We could uh, overturn your patent, but it would be time-consuming and expensive. Um, here's $100,000 go away. And the patent troll, who only wanted $100,000 in the first place, goes away happy. The very large corporation, which has saved uh, $100 million, is happy. The lawyers, who have all billed exorbitantly, are very happy, and the only person who's not happy is me. So, um, I've been through this before. So, that's why I hate patent trolls. Well, I mean, they stifle innovation too, but um, anyway. Uh, so, that's what's happening. Now, um, some other uh, aspects of patent. As I said, um, there is this... Uh, dichotomy in, in perception of the individual versus the collective that leads to this um, disjoint attitudes towards intellectual property uh, between Eastern and Western cultures. And for many years, uh, Western cultures uh, got really ticked off because Eastern cultures didn't have any patent laws, or at least not very useful ones. And uh, so every time a Western product came out, uh, you know, Japan, China, Taiwan, etc., would uh, uh, make a killing duplicating this stuff and selling it cheaper. So um, recently, this has uh, been mediated and agreed to and um, patent laws are uh, being implemented, legislated in uh, various Eastern jurisdictions. Um, <laughs> interestingly, as is very often the case, uh, some people go overboard in this. Um, patents tend to be issued between about 10 and 50 years um, because, you know, you don't want to stifle um, anything related to this invention forever. You, you want to give the inventors a chance to make some money, but then uh, you want other people to be able to use the idea. Um, so uh, Japan recently issued a patent on one of the three, uh, the only three uh, types of um, projection systems. It, you know, you got this little projector, you plug your laptop into it, and then you can project it on a wall or a screen or something and show people, uh, a room full of people, what you can only look at on your laptop. So, um, three types of technologies there. One was invented, I believe, by Epson in Japan, and they have a patent on it for 999 years. And you sort of figure, you know, you know, is anything like our technologies even going to exist in a thousand years? Uh, so that's kind of interesting.